Remember those times where almost all developers made their games with love and wanted to optimize the shit out of their games? Yeah, me neither. Crisis was a super optimized game compared to some shit we get nowadays. But let me just start this video by telling you that developers are finally fixing their shit with FSR 3 frame generation. Yeah, they finally fix it. And in case you're new to the channel, I made some videos before about how they were actually ruining FSR 3 frame generation and how the bad implementations were really bad and the mods were actually better than the official implementations. And I'm talking about uh, The Last of Us, Robocop, for example, The Thaumaturge, um, and there are many others, like Warzone in some scenarios, Avatar that started well and then went to bollocks. But gladly, in these recent days, in this couple of days, they actually fixed it. All those games. Let's start with Avatar and Update 3.2, where on the technical part we see PC, AMD FSR 3 has been temporarily rolled back. And this means that they somehow rolled back the, the FSR 3 version in order to make it work. And I said in several videos before that Avatar frame generation was working properly, but then they updated it and made it worse. And on this update they actually rolled back to the previous version that was working properly and it is now working properly once again, but I'll show you in some minutes. Also a dev note, to prevent visual artifacts impacting the interpolation output of FSR 3 frame generation, we've decided to roll back the previous to the previously used version of FSR 3. Despite this rollback, we've decided to keep certain improvements that we introduced with the upgraded version, such as improvements to UI composition when using frame generation. Basically, you'll see less UI flickering or less UI movement artifacts when moving around the camera and so on. That's what they did. They rolled back the version of the frame generation, but kept those improvements, which is a nice thing. Another game that was severely broken was Robocop Rock City and once again we have the patch 05 saying fixed AMD frame generation. All we have there is fixed AMD frame generation. I don't really know if they rolled back on the version, uh, if they fixed the frame generation themselves, if they asked the AMD to make a new version or a better version or to send them a fixed version, I don't really know. And I was actually going to make this video two days ago and I'm glad I didn't, because yesterday uh, an update for The Last of Us got released with a patch 1.1.3.1 and it says improved support for AMD FSR 3 frame generation. And believe me, it is just not improved support. It is now working properly as well. Silky smooth. Almost as smooth as today's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. But well, let's cut to the chase and let's start testing games. So we start with Avatar and as we can see, uh, we're having 78, 79 FPS in this part, we actually have more. I believe that I don't... It seems like I have some kind of... Yeah, I had a frame limit option. And without frame limiting, we have 134, 135, 36. So the game is actually running well on the heavier parts, 98 FPS. I'm using FSR 3, 1440p. Graphics to high, let's put the, the graphics to ultra. And as we can see, well, in the heavier parts, 80, 85, 84. So it's running decently well at ultra settings. Scaling quality to ultra. And <laughs> once again, yeah, this game just looks very good. In terms of foliage and, and other things, it just looks great. Now, as soon as we go and we enable the frame generation, I actually have to disable the, the river Turner overlay in order to enable the frame generation is a thing of this game, I don't really know why. Here we are now with 180 FPS. We do have some kind of screen tearing, which is not actually screen tearing and more like motion artifacts from the um, motion artifacts from the frame generation, but that's a thing that happens. But generally speaking, I mean, it is just just much better. It is now fluid compared to the previous version that was obviously not and it would f it would give you kind of a stuttery feeling while Avatar now is just smooth with frame generation. 
is just much, much better than it was before. And if you want to make sure it stays inside your monitor's free sync range, it is quite simple. One of the things that I like the most about FSR 3 frame generation is that unlike Nvidia's frame generation, most games will give you the option to enable vSync with it. Or you can simple uh, kind of, well, put a frame limit, but remember, you can't put a frame limit of, uh, of, let's say, if your monitor is 144, or in this case 160 like mine, you can't put a frame limit of 160. And you can't do it because this frame limit option that you see here does not apply to the frame generated frames, it only applies to the in-game engine frames. So you actually have to put half of your refresh rate in order for then use frame generation and go to the maximum or close to the maximum of your frame rates. So if I lock to 78, let's keep the settings. What you can see here is that we now have 155, 100, in between 153 and 158. So yeah, now we are inside my monitor's refresh rate and man, it just feels good. It is indeed what we should expect from the beginning. The game feeling fluid and feeling much, much better than the usual 75. Remember, we're basically running at 75 FPS, then using frame generation to make it almost double. And it does feel much, much better than when using 75. And I believe you can even see that on video. As soon as I disable the frame generation, and yes, I need to go here once again, I won't even show you the FPS, but we are now at 75 and look, I mean, you can definitely see that you're running at much, much lower refresh rate and much, much lower FPS. As soon as we go once again and we enable the frame generation, 150 something, 140 something, yes, it is just much, much smoother. Now this is an enjoyable experience, unlike the experience that we had with 75 FPS. So yeah, frame generation is finally working properly and in some case scenarios since it is working properly and you're limiting the base frames, you'll even be able to save some power. For example, look at the power usage. I'm running 156 FPS because of the frame generation and look at the power draw of my card. 260 in some scenarios, 290, 270 something. So this might serve you to save some power as well, which is a very, very good thing. I'm really glad they updated it. And now we have Robocop, one of the games that also had a piss poor implementation and it really, it was really, really, really bad like the one in Avatar and The Last of Us. The, even when using frame generation it just wouldn't feel smooth and I even made this video passing right now on the screen where I show that when I modded the FSR 3 into the game, the frame generation, it was much better than the official implementation and once again gladly they fixed it. So we're running once again 1440p TSR, one thing that I don't like about this update uh, is that TSR somehow TSR, sorry, Portuguese was taking over. TSR somehow does not allow you to uh, to use a quality mode or something like that. At least on my end, maybe I need to verify the files. But it is a bug somehow. Before you had the option to use TSR quality or you could even choose the resolution scale yourself. Something that TSR does not allow now. But instead of using the resolution scale as soon as you enable FSR 3, you now have the quality mode and so on. You can choose them. And as for the settings, I'm running the maximum settings with the usual motion blur and chromatic ab aberration disabled. Uh, when I use the quality mode with FSR, the quality itself doesn't look that great, I must tell you, in terms of upscaling, in terms of upscaling once again, because, well, we're using FSR 2.2, which is basically the upscaler of FSR 3, so the upscaling quality is not that great, but in terms of FPS, we're already running 120 which sincerely we didn't need more than that, but if you're running 4K, for example, frame generation might help. Now, as soon as we enable the frame generation, obviously we go to 200 FPS, but look at this. Yeah, it is now smooth. Even if you look at the frame timeline, you can see that the frame, time the frame timeline is just smooth, really, really smooth, silky smooth, unlike before where the frame timeline was completely broken, something that gladly was fixed with this update. And like I told you before, one of the things that I like about FSR is that most games allow you to use vSync with FSR at the same time. I don't, be I believe that this game allows, yes, allows it. vSync, the frame timeline might appear different 
and it is definitely not as smooth as it should be. Not, for example, like Starfield, but it is it is decently smooth, but it also has a lot more input latency when using VSync, and it isn't as smooth as it should be, like I told you before. So what you can do in this game is like we did on Avatar. All you have to do is go off, then you go to the frame limiting option. Instead of unlimited, you go, for example, yeah, we just, it, yeah. They should allow it something, well, they should allow you to choose the frames, but yet, let's use limit to 60 and let's disable the frame generation for you guys to see in terms of smoothness. So we're running 60 FPS and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just not used to 60 FPS anymore. It just feels like everything is stuttering or crashing. Yeah, 60 FPS. All times, all times, I guess. Now, as soon as we enable the frame generation, the frame generation will basically double the frame rates and we went from 60, in this case it actually doubles the frame rates. So we went from 60 to 120. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is just silky smooth and we have way less latency than when using Vsync. So for this game, Robocop Rock City, the best thing that you do is actually limit the FPS to 60, for example, and then use frame generation to double the frames. And I mean, man, it just feels much. I mean, it just feels hundreds of times better than when using 60 FPS only. Much, much better and well done, definitely. Even, even in movement. Yeah, the frame generation just works very well. I mean, frame generation from AMD is actually very, very good. What they aren't on par with AMD, or with AMD, with uh, Nvidia, sorry, I'm focusing on the shooting, with Nvidia and Intel, is actually the upscaling, but in terms of frame generation, they are very, very good right now. Their, their frame generation tech is, is great already. It's the best of both worlds. It just, it just really is great. Lower temperatures, lower noise levels, everything is, is very good here. Definitely. It's a win-win situation. And now with the last game tested on this video, which is The Last of Us, the last one to actually get the FSR 3 fix. Now, this game runs pretty well, we're running ultra settings, my bad, we're running ultra settings, as you can see, ultra settings at 1440p and we're running it <laughs> with, default, with default render scale, basically TAA, no upscaling whatsoever and in this part we're still having like 100 FPS or even more. Now let's try for example the native AA option, which usually is not my pick since it over sharpens things a lot, the native anti-aliasing, but still we're having 112, 113 with native FSR, FSR running as anti-aliasing instead of upscaling. Just keep pushing forward. And it looks quite decent, not the best, let me just say, not the best, but quite decent. And 89 here on this part, 91, this part is heavier. And as soon as you enable the, um, the native AA for FSR3, you are also able to enable the frame generation. You don't need to use the upscaling, you can just use anti-aliasing FSR3 and enable the frame generation. We go to 170, 160 something, and once again, let me tell you, it just, yeah. Compared to what we had before, it is just much, much better in every sense just much, much better. It is indeed much more fluid. The smoothness is on another level, completely different level, not even close. And I'm having some tearing due to being outside of my monitor's refresh rate. And even in this scenario, it just feels much, much better. Even without the tearing, it feels much better than what we had before, which is, which is crazy if you think about it. Yeah, you're dead. It's, it is finally working as it should. And I mean, like the other games that we saw before, like Robocop, all you have to do, for example, here, instead, firstly, you can use the, the V-Sync, as I told you before, one thing that I like about FSR3. So use the V-Sync, and it will lock your frames to a maximum of 160. In this case, it isn't needed, as I'm not reaching those frame rates. Once again, getting the the rifle here, but in case you're using upscaling instead of the native AA, this will come handy. So let's now enable the upscaling, quality mode, and with frame generation, but with Vsync enabled as well. We enable it, and as you can see, a maximum of 160. Although, 
it is it is smooth. I I have to say it is smooth, definitely. This this much I I can tell. It is working well, like Starfield, but it does have some input latency, uh, which for some people might not be the best case scenario. What you can do though is do the same thing as we did in Robocop and limit the base frame rates and then wait for the double. So we disable the V-Sync. Let's go, for example, to 70. Let's go to 70. And with frame generation from 70, we go to 140. And now we still have very, very fluid gameplay. Look at this. Just, <laughs> just silky smooth as it should be. Man, why didn't they do this from the beginning? Why they... Uh, it's like they didn't test it. They were testing things blindfolded or something because the game was really, really bad in terms of frame generation and it is now silky smooth as it should be. And if you're not using V-Sync, the, um, I mean, the input latency is really low if you're not using V-Sync. What you have to do is once again, just limit the frame rates and then use frame generation. And now we're running 140 FPS, but instead of wasting, let's say, 280 watts of power or something, we're just running at 200. 220, so much less power, lower temperatures, lower noise levels, all at the same time, which is insane. Finally, the implementation is actually good in this game. Finally. But we had to complain, otherwise they wouldn't fix it. Which is a bummer already. Bam, you're down. I have one shot. Yeah, and you're down. Low power draw, low heat output, everything, and still running at 140 Hz. And yeah, guys, that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comment in the comment section if you're playing The Last of Us, Robocop, or if you're playing Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Leave a comment in the comment section and uh, let me know your experience with frame generation because I can tell you right away. I actually have a trained eye for this and it works very, very well. It went from non-usable to enjoyable, which is great in my book. Thank you once again, guys, and see you in the next video. Cheers.